and cleanse yourself from sin. If you want God to be, you know, to be connected to God, there will be that repentance, that turning to the Lord Jesus Christ as certain Jesus, as your Lord and Savior. If you're not, you are not connected. You're not going to work. And so last week, we also looked at the things you need to avoid. One of them is hardness of heart. So Christians are too stubborn. They come to the same person, but they are stubborn. Jesus came and spoke to them, and he took them of their stubbornness and hardness of heart. Hardness of heart is determined not to change your behavior, your opinion, your attitude about God. Difficult to deal with. Difficult person to deal with. That's hardness of heart. Jesus rebuked them for that. Anybody that is not connected to heaven must avoid what happiness of heart. If your heart is added, you can't be connected to God. Because there is something that God will be telling you to do, which doesn't make sense to human mind. But when we go into a little bit, we say that Jesus will be the Lord, but they're not believing. Rejection of spiritual truth as stated in the word of God, the Bible. So people read certain things. And they just don't believe. Thomas said, Unless I put my hand and his side, I put my hand in the hole in his head, in his hand, I will not believe. <laughs> Jesus said, Oh, blessed are those that do not see but do not believe. I think they do not believe. Everybody that is saying, don't believe, never become connected to heaven. Never. I'm telling you, you must believe God. Hallelujah. So, that would be with unbelief. Unbelief is never having you opposing your faith. You oppose the rejection of the fact of what God can do. And I'm going to open this to from there today. You see, if you want to be connected to heaven, you must base your prayer. You must pray. You must pray. Prayer plays a key role there, and your prayers must be based on the word of God. You must know the word of God. For example, when you go to the hospital, I think you are not the way you are today. In the different medications for headache, you can use medication for headache or something else. It is specifically for that. If you don't use the right medication, will you get it? No. They give you specific. And some of the medication is for external use only. Something that is not for external use can be for internal use. The same thing happens with the Lord of God. There are certain things that we must understand about the Lord of God. You see, one of the problems that come up is that they don't read the Bible. They don't meditate on the Word of God. And they don't know what the Bible says, what the Word of God says about certain things. If you do, then you can be connected to them. The word of God. And I said, no, let's look at Psalm 138, verses 2 and 3. And I will meet some people to read. You must read the word of God. You must believe the word of God. God is looking for people that will believe his word. Psalm 138, verses 2 and 3. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. And John chapter 6, verses 3. I want you to listen carefully to this word of God. Yes. 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 See, listen to this. Bible says, God has magnified what? His word above his word. His name. It means that when the word of God plays a very high significant potential, God magnifies his word above his name. The word of God comes to you. You must take it seriously. God speaking to you. If Jesus was to have helped this guy, he's here we go. But if he comes to this guy, he will not speak anything outside the word of God. So if you know what the word says, that is what the word is about. And God says, remind me. You need to go to God. What happens in the secret? You pray. They remind God of his promises. The Bible says, what is over his word? Jeremiah has a lot of students. I need a place. Jeremiah, where are the Bible students? 
Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. It's very, very important. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, God says, I will certainly carry out all my work, my plans. I want another translation. Yes. Bible student. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to see my word to perform it. Listen to it. What does it mean to ask? Is this God watches over his word? Do you want to perform it? The things that God is his word. If you are praying that is not based on the word of God, you need to base what you're saying, what you pray on the word of God. When you do that, you will be connected to them. You will. John chapter 6, verse 6. He said this. Jesus is the one that said this. Yes. He said John 6, 63. Yes. John 6, 63. The spirit that quickened. Yes. The flesh from the head. You see, listen to this. When you do things in the flesh, it will profit you nothing. You come to church and you are in the place to promise The Spirit of God will quicken you. I pray that the Spirit of God will quicken the Word of God in your life. Yeah. I pray that the Spirit of God will quicken you to pray. Yeah. The, what, the Spirit of God will quicken your faith to believe the Word of God. Yeah. Said, the Spirit quicken. That's why you need the power of your Spirit. You, but that was the end of it. We don't. The words Jesus said, He said, The words that I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirits. They are spirits. Listen to this. Underline it. The words, when you read the word of God, something happens to you. Two things. The spirit of the word enters into you. Second of it, life comes. Who doesn't want life? Life comes, not death. Life comes. So when Jesus and the word I speak to you, they ask what? Spirit and what? As I'm speaking, the spirit of the word is coming into you and to me. And life is coming. Not death, but life. The story of God comes. The activating power of that is in the world start to activate things. Hello. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you mix it with faith, it brings marriage, it brings deliverance. The word of God, they are powerful. They are spirit and they are what? Life. So if you read any other thing, it doesn't bring anything. How of God you need it? And so you need to stop yourself in the word of God. One of the things the enemy will do is to distract you from the word of God. You yeah, are to make it to want to understand what the word says about your situation. Are you with me? You are people of God. You need to think that the spirit of the word will come to you and the light that is in the world will come to you. Many people who read the Bible and the Lord will not understand because there's no spirit. The spirit of God is coming there, and it doesn't make sense. But when the spirit of God does something in your life and you believe it with the word of God, it brings miracles. Hallelujah. Uh, and I want to go and remind you of the word of God. One of the words that has been coming to my mind to talk about is Galatians chapter 3. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Listen to this. Galatians. Chapter 3, and we're going to read one verse only. I want somebody to read it for us. I think if you have different two translations, Galatians chapter 3, listen to what the word of God says. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. I know some of us know this passage. Right, sir. He 
said, Christ Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, Jesus Christ. He didn't say he's going to look at the text that is here. When you read it again, he said, Christ has redeemed us. Yes, we know, Pastor. He has redeemed us from what? From the God of the Lord. Not, yes. Yes. Thanks to everyone that hungered for the truth. Listen to this. Know that Christ is going to, as far as God is concerned, He has already redeemed us from what? The cause of the Lord. Listen to this. Anyone that prays the Lord of God is under a cause. That is the truth of the world. But the man said, Jesus has redeemed me from what? From the cause of the Lord. This is heavy. And I want you to take this seriously. What are the glory of He has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord. And let me tell you one thing. What there are three things Jesus will give us all. Number one, he redeems us. Of poverty. 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 Jesus redeemed us from poverty. Number one. Number two. Jesus redeemed us from sickness. Sickness. And told me, Jesus redeemed us from death. Both physical and spiritual and physical. He has become an example. He paid the price. I'm telling you, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, the first thing you do is to write your name in the book of life. That even when you leave this world, you will not be eternally condemned. He paid the price for that. The second thing is the second thing Jesus redeemed us from physical death. Is a redeemer. The Bible says, Thou shalt not die, but what? But live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. You are, if you don't believe it, you are a believer. And I want to think of that. The subject. Jesus wants us to reign in his life. You can't live in poverty. I know what the Lord does. What about the truth? I used to hear the same, but I made up my mind, Lord, I'm not going to be a poor man. Because if Jesus will free me from poverty, then poverty will not be my cause. Because Jesus will free me from it. I don't know what you do, but you're saying, I have so that as my grandparents, my, my mom, my grandmother will come up in the night and tell us the situation. How she has to beg for money, and I made up my mind, Lord, this is what is not going to be for sure. If that is what they are paying that time, Jesus, you deliver me from poverty, that will not be my God. It will come with that, not with me. Poverty. You know what the poverty is? Somebody that is not rich. Somebody that is not rich. Somebody that is not rich. I mean, you know, you for me. The second thing is sickness. Let me tell you what I don't know what I know what the Bible is going to say. In my life, I've experienced sickness and I wish I did not have all over the place. I wasn't born again. I didn't know the Lord. The gravity for one or two people is that in terms of what my dad said. I'm tired of this man. Let him die. The book said, please, let's try one more. I was in a world in that world the Lord was telling me, that word is the word of death. What you do to that word? You will die. Those of you, I don't know. The some of you know, I don't know the name of the word of death. Once you enter into that word, they don't come out alive. They know that you are going to what? Die. But we are very close to the world. 
to what they call the world, they just have you like what they have you know your friend. And this thing happens all the time. For God's sake, I tell you, I know what it is to be sick. I couldn't go to school. I lost education, I lost time because of sickness. It's not right. It's not right. I know what it is to be sick, but if I miss 24 hours, it's a long time. I will be wishing it to be morning. When morning comes, I will be wishing it to be night. I was in pain. And most part of it, the doctors could not diagnose the problem. Seven soldiers came and they were fighting each other. Go on. They were waiting for me. Someone said, Do you know what we're going to do? How can you take it together? Oh, God, he is in places in my life. Wow. Romans, I'll come back to that. The person that Romans chapter 5. Listen, why God snatched you and get you the gospel and get you a right to the book of life is that you are a man in this life. Romans chapter 5, verse 15 to 21. Let someone read it for us if you are there. Romans chapter 5. Yes. He was a born with faith. Jesus has redeemed us from it. 
As far as heaven is concerned, I am redeemed. You know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are redeemed. But you don't give your life to Jesus, you are not. Amen. Then you ask, why is this happening in my life? Why? It is one thing for God to say something in the Bible, it's another thing for you to experience it. Are you with me? I used to have headache every day of my life before I'm telling you. When I see that headache, when I see well, on the one day, God did something to me. I went to church in fellowship with my and the Lord met me when I was sitting and I said, All of you that are sick, come forward. Come forward. He said, Father, I've used my medication and I've been Today, Lord, I received my deliverance from it. He prayed for me that day, and that was my second time. No more. It's God forever. It means Jesus has the power to deliver. And to heal, no matter how complicated that matter may be, Jesus has the power to believe that you must be connected to him and to him to receive it. And that was the end of it. When I see, I remember those days, I used to hear noise. I don't know whether you did it. When I see, I hear noise. You know the reason why? Some of us, when we were small, they took us to this building and they made a decision on our bodies. Decisions. Different decisions. One day, one man of God was speaking, he said, You get that one. It's because of the decision they took on you. See, the enemy, the devil is oppressing your body, not your spirit. Your body is your body. Of oppression. He said, Come out and you will live. And the man said, we are not for you. I will ask for your people to pray for you. I look at this guy. I see why I cannot pray for us. Let me go to pray for you. And the last one is me. And when you pray for that one, you are so many. So, you might be thinking, well, this is for me. Why? And he started ministering to us and breaking the curses that comes from breaking the law. Let me tell you what the thing is. Jesus has given us from the cross of the Lord. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28. And I want you to pay attention to this because this is very crucial. Deuteronomy 28. Because we said Jesus delivered us from poverty, Jesus delivered us from sickness. This was delivered from death, both spiritual and physical, that we can live. Listen, let someone read for us. Verse 1. Did I read it loud? And I want you to get it to hear somebody. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt enter into gently into the voice of the Lord, yes. he will say, and to do all his commandments, he shall command you. That the Lord thy God will send you a heart above all nations. Listen to this. It's time for you. You can see the word. The Bible says, It shall come to pass if you will act in what? On the Lord, it diligently. Diligently means you put effort inside of it. You act into God and to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do. Part of it and to do what? Oh, you know, some of us Christian people call as they see Christian, they obey certain parts and leave the rest. God say, Pay your money, pay your life. You will not. God say, No, no, you give me the trip. No, if God says, All, oh, it means all. Oh. If from now on, we can this day, the Lord of God. Will set you on high above what all the nations of the earth. Read of me. And all these blessings shall come with thee. Yes. And overtake thee. Thou shalt enter the voice of the 
Listen to this. When you do it, what is going to happen? Blessings will follow. Blessings. This was, you don't need to pray for the Most of the money all the connection of heaven and the blessed people. It was wrong. But you must obey. The commandment, you must obey God diligently. Read your place. Verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Yes. Blessed shall be. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy time, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy rice basket and thy stock. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Okay, stop there for the Listen to me. Blessed shall you be when you live in the city, you will be blessed. When you are in the field, what you do, your work, your work will be what? Blessed. The fruit of your body will be what? Blessed. There will be no pain in the whole city. The fruit of your grass will be blessed. Your cattle will be blessed. It means all the material things will be blessed. Your basket, your storehouse, you go in, you are blessed. You come out, you are blessed. Blessing will overtake you. Uh, I said, Blessing will overtake you. Read on, please. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be sinful before thee. They shall come out against thee no more and flee before thee seven days. What is God saying? The enemy fighting you. They will come down here, they will go out anyway. No, we confuse them. Uh, defeat of your enemy, those who rise against you shall be defeated. Uh, little please. The Lord shall command bless you upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hands And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth. Listen to this. The storehouse. You know what the storehouse? When you start it, God will bless you. And God says, not only that, He will bless you in the land. Wherever you are in the land, God will bless you. God will do what? He will bless you. Listen to the greed of faith. The Lord shall establish thee and only be what He has said. Mm-hmm. And He has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep it. Commandments of the Lord I go and walk in his way. The Lord will establish you. Whatever I establish, the Lord will establish you. This is the truth. Little place, Lisa. And all people of the heart shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Mm-hmm. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in peace. Yes. Of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy father. Listen to this. God says, I will make you what? Sure in good. Is that in what? Plenty. You will have so much plenty that you will give to other people. I said, This one, I don't need it. Take this. You have a business, okay? I will give you the same thing to people because it will be so abundant. Pleasure. No, I'm not in good. That means material things you will not lack. That's not the end of it. If you fuck up your body, even your body will be fatal. And that is what God says. He said, You will be fatal because God, Jesus, has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord. When the ever comes, there will be a policy upon the family. You know Jesus and you hear all the Lord. That comes, Jesus will take it up. Read of this. The Lord shall open unto thee his good triumph, be able to give thee rain unto thy land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. Thou shalt lead unto many nations, and thou shalt not go. God will give me good treasure. When the Bible says good treasure, it means good treasure. And God will give you rain, and God will give you bless what? 
the work of your hand, whatever you do, even if you are setting stands, I'm telling you, whatever you do, God will bless you. It will be so much abundant that God will put his blessing so much upon it. And then we will trust him. Please do something for us. I have to be saved from that. I'm telling you, God, what do you want to be blessed? What do you give? What do you want to give? And he was looking. And he was looking. And he was looking. He was a young man. He was about 27. He was a young man. He went to my wife when she was sitting at the back. He said, Please, can I see your hand? He said, Just tell the Lord, I want to bless this hand. And if you don't bless it, I want to bless this hand. He's going to go in my hand. And he went to bed. He went back to the house. You know what? My wife never was looking for people. But somebody said that I need to call for you. And my wife was looking for people. And that's when she started to do it. And God used that as a name. Okay? That was the name of the name. And that's the name of the name. God bless that man. God bless that man. So when God says, I will bless you, I'm telling you, you know what I'm God bless that man. It became a big issue and a big issue. Every person who are talking of him, God is not going to be put down from San Diego or Boy Lake from everywhere. The only time we talk about it was when we were out of the church. I said, I'm going to be out of the church. I took one food, one Sunday morning, and I came to the church. I said, Father, that is yet on that food for Sunday morning. When God blesses the work of your hand, you don't want to do it. Whatever you do, God will do the blessing of your hand. You must obey God. That's what I ask. And the Lord shall make thee, shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be the least. If thou hear thee unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe. Listen to me, Lord. I'm serious about this. God will make you what? Yeah. You obey God, God will make you what? They will single you out of your people. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. uh, God. That's what I want to do about that. When he was here, the Lord said, You were standing for me. Then he, was he not sending you all over to one standing for me? Was he the only one in the class? He was not the only one. But God said, but if you go to verse 15, read verse 15 for us. Listen. But it shall come to pass. Yes. If thou be not acting unto the voice of the Lord, to observe to do all his commandments and the statutes, yes. and commanding this day, all these forces shall come to all the people. Listen to this. Yes. Yeah. You don't have this to God. You don't follow me. Because it's wrong. Go to verse 47. Let's read that one quickly. Verse 47 and 48. For thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, thou shalt serve thy enemies. The Lord shall send you against them with hunger and in doubt and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy head. 
and no income. Listen. I'm not going to sell my anything. This is to be complete. To be calm. If you bring these blessings, we overtake you and pursue you. Connected to heaven, you need to. And then you make up your mind. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I want you to just pray to the Lord. Are you connected to heaven? Are you diligently obeying the voice of the Lord that like God? Jesus has redeemed us from the God of the Lord. I'm going to ask God to come on. If you don't give your life to Jesus, you will serve your enemy. You will serve the devil. But make up your mind today. I don't know where to show up, to serve him from. I don't know who is you. Heal your body, heal your mind, heal your spirit. Jesus is here to heal you. Deliver us from poverty, from sickness, from affliction. First of all, we can heal your spirit. Thank you so much. Yes, we really appreciate you, we Lord, for the word that has come to us. We will not serve our family. Lord, we choose to serve you. Is to obey the word of God all the way. Father, empower every one of us, O oh God, to continue in that which we are able to do. Serving you with our friends, serving you with our friends, serving you with everything that you have given to us. We receive grace for Almighty God for it. Thank you, Jehovah. Bless you, Jesus. Jesus name. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take um, our offerings or tithes. Uh, so, first, you want to just do it through zero or you've probably done it already. And then, if you see what we're doing physically here, please, there are envelopes around. Um, please take advantage of that. I tell you, you're serving the Lord with your means, and once you must talk about it, it's blessed for my hands to be. My hands to be was a song. Church. Happy 